Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Anna and I am a critical care register nurse. Today we are going to be talking about something very near and dear to my heart, quite literally. We are going to be talking about some cardiac physiology and anatomy. Specifically, we are going to be talking about PDAs or patent ductus arteriosus and what a patent or an open ductus arteriosus presents like in a premature baby. So I'm going to draw an incredibly simplified heart for you. And in fact, this diagram is so simplified, it doesn't even have any valves or anything like that. But just remember as I'm drawing this out and explaining this to you, my goal is to give you a framework to build upon later. There are a lot of details that we are not talking about. Just know that these details are there and that this is a very, very simplified working model, again, for you to build upon later. Let's talk through this heart that I'm drawing for you. You can see the four different chambers and the four different boxes. And um, in our right atrium, we have deoxygenated blood coming in from the body via the superior and inferior vena cava, it then goes into the right ventricle and is pumped to the lungs via the pulmonary artery. The blood gets oxygenated in the lungs and comes back to the left side of the heart. Now remember that the right side and the left side of the heart are completely separate. So once the blood comes back to the heart via the pulmonary veins from the lungs, it's oxygenated, goes to the left ventricle, and then this oxygenated blood is um, distributed throughout the body via the aorta. When we look at the aorta on this simplified diagram, I want you to notice three branches, and these three branches are very, very important. The first branch is the brachiocephalic artery, the second is the left common carotid, and the third is the subclavian. I also want you to notice the PDA that I've drawn in this, um, in this heart structure. We'll talk about this a lot more in just a minute, but know that the PDA is a connection between the pulmonary artery and the aorta right underneath that first branch of the aorta, the branch that is the brachiocephalic artery. Before we go on any further, let's talk quickly about what the heart and lungs look like in utero, because this is really important to understanding PDAs and preemies. Because the lungs are filled with fluid in utero, there is no oxygenation happening in the lungs. This is the placenta's job, and in fact, about 90% of blood is shunted away from the lungs to the placenta to be oxygenated. Like we mentioned before, the ductus arteriosus is a shortcut between the pulmonary artery and the aorta. There's actually another shortcut, which we're not going to talk about much in this video, but that is a PFO or a patent foramen ovale, which is a shortcut between the right and the left atrium. Now, blood is lazy. Blood will always flow to the path of least resistance. And blood flow in the heart always depends on pressure. Blood will flow where there's the least amount of pressure. Now, PDAs will close in a term baby between 24 to 48 hours, sometimes a little bit longer, and this little pathway just turns into a small ligament. But when a premature baby is born, sometimes the body doesn't get all of the signals that it does when the baby is term that tell the body it's time to close this pathway. Sometimes this pathway stays open for days after a baby is born, and as you can imagine, this can be problematic. So let's use our diagram that we drew out earlier to go over this a little bit more. Remember that in utero, the pressure in the lungs is really, really high because the lungs are filled with fluid. Blood is lazy, so blood will not flow into the lungs to get oxygenated, but will flow across the PDA. This is normal. This um, allows the blood to more efficiently get to the placenta to be exchanged. Now, when a premature baby is born, this right to left shunt can sometimes switch to a left to right shunt across the PDA if the PDA stays open. This is because the pressure in the lungs, the pulmonary pressure decreases because the lungs are no longer filled with fluid and the pressure in the body increases. Now, because the body's pressure is greater than the pressure in the lungs, our blood flow is going to switch because blood is lazy. This means that we are going to have blood, oxygenated blood flowing from the aorta over to the right side of the heart through the PDA 
meaning that we have some oxygenated blood mixing with the deoxygenated blood that is about to be oxygenated in the lungs. Now let's talk quickly about pre and post ductal oxygen saturations. We will talk about this a lot more in our next video when we talk about PDAs and term babies, but just know that your pre-ductal oxygenation sat is reflective of your um, of the first branch of the aorta, which is the brachiocephalic artery. This, remember, is before the PDA. So this will always be reflective of your oxygenated blood before any sort of shunting takes place. We put the second probe on the baby's foot, typically, and this is reflective of a post-ductal oxygen saturation, which means that this is below a PDA. And in term babies, you can have a difference in these numbers as the blood flow changes across the PDA. But in a preterm baby with an open PDA, we won't see any changes in our pre and our post ductal oxygen saturation. When we look down at our heart, we see that we have the movement of oxygenated blood across the PDA towards the pulmonary artery where the deoxygenated blood is. There is no movement of deoxygenated blood mixing with oxygenated blood. And this is because of the pressure difference that we talked about earlier in the heart. The lungs are now full of air and not fluid, so the pulmonary pressures have decreased and the pressures in the body, the systemic pressures have increased. This is forcing oxygenated blood across that pathway to the area of lower pressure. Our pre and post ductal oxygenation set will be the same because both of these values are reflecting pure oxygenated blood. Now let's talk about some of the global symptoms that you'd see in a premature baby who has a left to right shunt across a PDA. One of the first things that you'll probably notice about these babies is that they have a murmur or that extra harsh whooshing sound when you are listening to their heart. In addition to the S1 and the S2, you'll hear a very harsh whoosh that may even cover up some of your S1 and S2 heart noises because you're hearing that blood flow moving across that pathway. You will also probably feel bounding pulses and see wider pulse pressures. And if we look at our diagram, we will see why this is. The systolic pressure increases because there is so much blood coming back from the lungs and the diastolic pressure decreases because there's so much blood being shunted to the lungs away from the rest of the body. Let's wrap things up by focusing on two main symptoms that you might see if your patient has a PDA and a left to right shunt. The first thing that you'll see is something that we call wet lungs as a result of the increased blood flow to the lungs. This can be seen on x-ray and this extra blood flow makes it hard for the alveoli to stay inflated and harder for gas exchange to happen in the lungs. The worse a PDA is, the more wet your lungs will be, the more stiff the lungs will be, and these babies will be needing increasingly more respiratory support to achieve gas exchange. The second symptom that we will look at that is common in babies with a left to right shunt is decreased blood flow to the body because so much of that blood is being shunted towards the lungs. This shunting can lead to decreased systemic perfusion. When the body does not have enough blood to provide oxygen to all of its organs, it goes into survival mode and only gives blood to the most important organs, the most vital organs. This means that organs like your gut and your kidneys won't receive an adequate amount of blood and therefore oxygen because the body is trying to push all of that extra blood, the little blood that's left to organs like your brain, your heart, and your lungs. Because there is poor systemic perfusion and the shunting away from less vital organs, you will see a decreased urine output and an increased creatinine as blood is shunted away from the kidneys. And you'll also see poor tolerance to feeds as blood is shunted away from the gut. 
peristalsis is decreased, your patients will become distended and will have decreased or no bowel movements. In another video, we can go over some of the treatments for PDAs, but I hope that this video was helpful in explaining to you what symptoms you can expect to see in a premature baby with a left to right shunt across their patent ductus arteriosus. And more importantly, I hope that you understand how the blood is flowing inside the heart. And if you can understand this patho, you don't have to spend a bunch of time memorizing the symptoms that you'll see associated with a PDA and a premature baby. You'll know based on where the blood is flowing, what kind of symptoms you would expect to see. If this video is helpful, please give it a thumbs up and be sure that you subscribe so you don't miss any content from me in the future.